Good morning year 9 students, this is Mr. Shaban and today we're going to learn the rate of the reaction as part of our e-learning classes due to the corona infection in Qatar. I hope you're safe, stay tuned. Hello year 9. In today's lesson we're going to have two lesson objectives. We're starting with the first one is a learning how to measure the rate of the reaction. The second one is to find out the factors affecting the rate of the reaction. Speaking about learning how to measure the rate of the reaction, we have two methods to learn the rate of the reaction. The first one is by measuring the increase in volume. The second one is by measuring the decrease in mass. But before we jump into it, we need first to memorize the general formulas for the reactions of acids. As you know, we have metals. When metals react with acid, they produce salt along with hydrogen. And as you can see, hydrogen is highlighted in red because this is the product that we're going to monitor in order to find out the rate of the reaction. In the second reaction, we have metal carbonate along with acid. When metal carbonate react with acid, we're going to have salt along with carbon dioxide and at the end we're going to find out water carbon dioxide also is highlighted in red color because it's going to be monitored in order to find out the rate of the reaction so basically we're going to find out carbon dioxide and hydrogen based on the volume and the mass in order to find out if the reaction is very fast or very slow based on these following methods the first one is by measuring the volume of gas produced. See, it's so simple. If we have huge amount of gas is produced in a very short time, this means that the reaction is very fast. When the volume of gas produced is very low, within a longer time or same volume within a longer time, this means that the reaction is taking place in a slower pattern. See, in this case, we're going to find out the speed of the reaction by the help of the following apparatus. You have a conical flask. Inside the conical flask, we have metals along with uh, acid. When metal reacts with acid, as we have discussed earlier, it produces salt and hydrogen. Hydrogen is produced as bubbles, as you can see. And this is a closed system where the hydrogen gas will find only one way to go, which is through the tube toward the gas syringe. You're going to collect the gas, the hydrogen gas, and you're going to measure the volume of gas produced at every minute. So at a certain time interval, you measure the volume of gas produced. The more the gas which is going to be produced, the more the plunger of the gas syringe will go to the rack, so you can find the clear measurement on the scale of the gas syringe. That's one way. The second way, is by measuring the reduction in mass. See, as you know, if we're starting the reaction with 100 grams of a reactant, we should end up the reaction with 100 grams of a product. So basically, the mass of the reaction should be equal to the mass of the product based on the law of conservation of mass. And as we're taking place, the reaction is taking place in an open system. So the system is going to let the gas escape from the conical flask which is going to make a reduction in the mass for the product so we're starting this reaction on a balance to find out the amount of mass at the beginning of the reaction then we're going to measure the reduction in mass every minute so within the reaction we're going to find out how many grams of the mass of the product will be reduced reducing within the time as we have discussed the different ways to measure the rate of the reaction, it's, it's our time to find out the factors affecting the rate of, of the reaction. How to find out if the reaction is, can be fast or slow. These ways are going to be discussed through four factors. So the first factor is the temperature. Second factor is concentration. Third factor is particle size or surface area. Last factor is catalyst. Speak about the surface area. Guys, in order to have a chemical reaction as we have discussed earlier, 
you need to find the reactant exposed to each other. So the more the reactant will be exposed to the other reactant, the faster the reaction will take place. So if we have a large surface area, we're going to have a faster reaction. When we have a lower surface area, we're going to have a slower reaction. Speak about a surface area and to understand it, I want you to see this example. This is a large cube. This cube has six faces. In order to find out the area of the cube, we need to find out the area of one face and then multiply it by six. The length of the face of the cube is two centimeter square. Sorry, two centimeter. In order to get the area of one face, we multiply two by two to give out four centimeter square. In order to find out the area of the whole cube, we're going to multiply uh, four centimeter square times six to give you 24 centimeter square. So the overall area of this cube is for 24 centimeter square. Speak about the same square, and if we have sliced the square into eight squares, same square will cut it into eight small squares, equal sizes and equal area. The, four, uh, the eight squares are going to have certain area, so we're going to measure the area of each square, and then we're going to multiply the area of each square by eight to find out the new surface area. So in order to find out the area of one uh, uh, cube, we're going to get the length, which is one centimeter, multiplied by one centimeter to get one centimeter square per each face of a cube. Each cube has six faces, so we're going to multiply one times six. So the overall area for one cube, one small cube is six centimeter squares. We're going to multiply six centimeter squares by eight to find out that the overall area for the small cubes at the moment is 48 squares. This means when we had the large object, it had a lower surface area. It was less exposed to the environment than the smaller cubes. So when you have a large piece of solid, it's going to react very slow compared with the same reactant in a powder form. So when you crash the large piece of solid to change it into a powder form, you're going to get a faster reaction. So the, the smaller the particle is, the larger the surface area will be and the faster the reaction will take place. And the lower the surface area is, the slower the reaction will take place. Speaking about the second factor affecting the surface area, which is temperature. It's way too easy, guys. You know, when we heat up the reaction, when we heat up the reactant, actually we're giving more thermal energy to the particles. Particles are going to gain it and are going to have a higher kinetic energy. As particles gain a high kinetic energy, they are going to move very fast and they are going to collide harder. The harder the collision is, the faster the reaction will be. It's about the collision. When you are exposed, you're going to have a faster reaction. When you're colliding harder, you're going to have a faster reaction. So it's all about collision, keep it in mind. Speaking about the rate of the reaction with the temperature, the lower the temperature is, the slower the particles are going to move, and the collision is going to have less energy and the reaction is going to be slow. When we heat it up, particles are going to gain thermal energy, which is going to change into high kinetic energy, which will make the particles move fast and the particles are going to collide more frequently and very hard. So this is going to speed up the chemical reaction. Speaking about the temperature, I want you to see this line graph. This line graph is comparing two uh, reactions, same reactant, but at different temperatures. As you can see, the red line represents the high temperature and the green line represents low temperature. Both of, the, both of them have produced the same volume of gas, but at different speeds. The red line has produced the gas very fast, which 
is reflecting that the particles are moving fast and colliding harder. On the other hand, we have the green line. The green line represents that the reaction was slow because the particles were moving slow and the collision didn't have enough energy to keep the reaction as fast as possible. Speaking about the third factor which is affecting the rate of the reaction, it's concentration. Concentration is very important guys, I know it, it might be complicated a little bit, but I'm going to give you an easy example for that. Imagine yourself in an empty classroom, you and four other students. So five of you are in one class, moving randomly inside the classroom. What's the possibility of both of two students hitting each other? coming into one point where they are in contact in the same point. The possibility is going to be very low. What if we have increased the number of the students inside the classroom? We have added like 10 more students or 20 more students, up to 100 more students. The possibility of these students are going to come in contact together with each other is going to be high. So this reflects how the concentration is going to speed up the chemical reaction and remember it's all about collision so the larger or the higher the number of particles are in the reaction the more the reaction is going to take place faster because the reactions are going to be less more frequently colliding together as we have more frequent collision this represents that we're going to have faster reaction. Remember, it's all about collision. In high concentration, we have too many particles and we have frequent collision. In less concentration, we have few particles and we have rare collision. That's why less concentration or low concentration, we're going to have slower reaction. And in high concentration, we're going to have a higher speed of the reaction. Speak about catalyst. Catalyst is the last factor which is affecting the rate of the reaction. Catalyst is like that friend which is keeping the people into a fight. You know when you have a conflict with another one and then suddenly from nowhere a student come in between and start to say fight, 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 fight. What happens after that? Both of you are going to get into the fight and this student is going to leave. Because this student actually, his job is not to get into the fight. His job just to heat it up and leave without getting into the fight. That's exactly the case for the catalyst. Catalyst, what the whole function of the catalyst is, is to speed up the chemical reaction without changing, without getting into the reaction. You should keep it in mind. Catalyst will never change in a chemical reaction. Catalyst, speed it up and then disappears. Will never change. Keep it in mind, will never change. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Today's lesson was a quick summary about the rate of the reaction and it, everything is summarized in the last slide. As you can see, we have the factors to keep the rate of the reaction very high, to speed up a chemical reaction like a high temperature, high concentration, larger surface area and using a catalyst. We have other factors, same factors, but changing them, we can get a slower reaction like low temperature, less concentration, and no catalyst with lower surface area. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson. Until we meet again, 